six mistakes you're making on your website and how to fix them. The first mistake you're making is you're not using SVGs. SVG stands for scalable vector graphics, keyword scalable and vector. You can use SVGs instead of PNGs or JPEGs or other raster formats for things like logos, icons, simple illustrations, patterns, backgrounds, and more. But why should you? Well, the most important benefit is it's a vector file, not a raster file. So you can scale it up or down as much as you want and it won't lose any quality. Perfect for websites. Ever seen a logo or an icon look kind of blurry? Well, that's because it's a raster file scaled down or up and it loses quality. SVGs always look clean and sharp. Plus the actual file size is usually a lot smaller than raster formats, which is perfect for websites. For example, this icon is about five kilobytes when it's a PNG that's only 100 pixels tall. When it's an SVG, it's only one kilobyte, so five times smaller. And you can make the SVG as big or as small as you want to, and both the quality and the file size are gonna stay the exact same. Of course, this is a tiny file size either way, but the point still stands. And those numbers add up, and the more you use SVG, the bigger the difference becomes. The second mistake is using images with text that is an actual part of that image. A picture is worth a thousand words, except in the eyes of search engines. Your text should be actual text, because if it isn't, that text does not exist for search engines, which can hurt your SEO. Plus, text on images is a part of that image, meaning it's very likely to be blurry. It's not gonna scale up or down well, which means your text is gonna look bad. Not to mention that to make it responsible, Responsive, you're gonna have to upload different images for different devices, which is not just a whole lot of unnecessary work, but it's also gonna slow down your website. On the other hand, just resizing actual text and making it fit is much, much easier. And it's gonna look and work better. The third mistake that I see all of the time is placing your social media icons in the header. The header is gonna be the first or one of the first things your users are gonna see. It's gonna be on every page and if it's sticky, so if it's always available at the top as you scroll down, your users are gonna see it a lot. So when you put your social media icons in the header and users actually click them, they're gonna go to Instagram or Facebook or whatever else. And once they are there, you have zero control over what they see. They can get a notification from a friend and they're gonna forget all about your website. And attention spans are very short these days and attention is very difficult to come by. Not only that, you also don't get to track how they behave or what they do. You lose all of that. You lose all of the control and you lose all of the information. And most of us use or should use social media to drive traffic to our website. It's your base, it's your castle, you control everything. So you get users there so they can buy something or contact you or see your offer. Whatever it is, you put in a lot of effort to get them there. So why would you want them to just leave and go on social media? Social media is designed to hold attention. It's designed to keep people glued to the screen. They're like parasites sucking out every little drop of attention they can get just so they can survive. And you know, they, they also make money off of it. They definitely do not want to share that attention with you or your website. Speaking of attention, I could use some. So please make sure you like the video. It would help me out a whole lot. Most of the time, social media links in a header are a horrible idea. There are exceptions, but they're just that, exceptions. Think about how your users behave, what they do and what you want them to do, and then decide where your social media links should be. I recommend you just put them in the footer, so at the very bottom of your website, so if anybody's actually looking for them, they're gonna know where to find them. Just don't put them at the very start of your website. Speaking of the very start of your website, the fourth mistake, this one's a bad one. Sliders at the very start of your website. Sliders that contain your main offer, information or call to action, which is what should be at the start of your website, but not in the form of sliders. But why is that? Well, not many people are actually gonna get to the end of the slider, which means your important information is getting ignored, which is not something you want. Also, sliders can be really annoying. Even just a few lines of text can be very difficult to read before the slider slides. There is a time and space for sliders. They can be an awesome solution. I use them myself, but they are definitely not a good practice for the start of your website or for your most important content. Instead, just use regular text, images, and videos to present your most important information. The fifth mistake is being afraid of space. 
white space. Cramping things together, trying to get as much content into the tiniest space possible. Most things will look better, cleaner and more professional if you give them a little bit more space. This goes for layouts where you want your elements to not be too close to each other. It goes for lines of text, so the space between lines of text, which is called the line height, you don't want your text to be squished together, that makes it difficult to read. It even goes for the space between your elements in the edge of the screen. It goes for pretty much everything on a website. Don't be afraid to open things up, don't be afraid of empty space, it's really important for how everything looks and works on a website. Let things breathe. Just try it out, give the things on your website a little bit more space and you're gonna see how much better it looks. And the sixth, and the sixth, sixth, mistake number six is not using an SSL certificate. SSL stands for Secure Sockets Layer. It's the difference between a website having an HTTP or an HTTPS address in which the S stands for secure. You know that little lock that shows up right next to a website address? That means that there is an SSL certificate installed. But the point is not having an SSL certificate installed means your users are getting notified that your website is not secure. Horrible user experience and horrible for building trust. Not only that, some browsers in some cases may actually block your website unless your users specifically agree that they want to access a website that is not secure. Horrible. And the basic SSL certificate that will be more than enough for most websites is completely free. You don't have to pay anything. So there really is no excuse for this. If you don't have it, go install it right after you check out this video next and hit that thumbs up button. Then you can go ahead and start fixing these mistakes. Thank you for watching.